please welcome Jeffrey Perry, Vice Chairman of the Inroads National Board of Directors. That video was truly amazing. Let's give another round of applause for that. It was actually, that was actually my first time and many people's first time actually seeing that video that it's my understanding was pulled from the archives and it just really encapsulates uh, this moment and what a great uh, thing to share with everyone to kick off this evening. So tonight, we have a special opportunity to share with you the dream and reality that Frank Carr envisioned almost 50 years ago. As you may know, I'm also an Inroads alumnus, um, and my journey with Inroads spans from my early years as a very skinny high schooler in Cleveland, Ohio, as part of the pre-college program, to today, a less than skinny senior partner at uh, Ernst & Young and our Transaction Advisory Services, and vice chair of our national board of directors. The Inroads experience helped to shape my life in terms of my aspiration for business and community leadership, as it does today for the current 1,600 uh, Inroads interns today. The dream of a civil rights activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., fueled the passion and inspired Frank Carr that you just witnessed in that video that he would commit to change the face of corporate America and uh, the overall community and society. This change, while inconceivable to many at the time, is actually being realized. And in fact, today there are over 26,000 Inroads alumni making an impact in the world and society today. And tonight, we actually celebrate the mission and legacy of Frank Carr by recognizing two alumni who have fulfilled this dream. William M. Pofo and Curtis St. Bryce are both with United Technologies, or UTC. Congratulations, gentlemen, on tonight being honored with your Legacy Awards. And in fact, Inroads' history with the corporate partners that will be honored tonight spans over 20 years. Again, United Technologies has a legacy of being the most strategic Inroads partner over the last five years, creating opportunities for more than 250 Inroads interns. The Enterprise Award is awarded to corporate sponsors who have exhibited a commitment to the diversity talent pipeline and have demonstrated a consistent support of the Inroads mission. We are delighted to recognize UTC and Chairman Louis Chenevere with the 2013 Enterprise Award. Now, the first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. The last is to actually say thank you and in between, the leader is a servant. This quote by Max Dupree certainly describes the outgoing Inroads National Board Chair, a, a visionary leader and personal friend, Maria Morris. Maria is an advocate for young people and an executive at MetLife who has given her talent and treasure to support the Inroads mission and vision. Inroads has a true champion in Maria and tonight, she will receive the Visionary Leadership Award for her steadfast dedication in leading the National Board of Inroads. <laughs> and in fact, I'd like to have all national and regional Inroads board members to stand to be recognized as well. Now, more on MetLife. MetLife has defined the best in class with the evolution of something called a Business Resource Group, or BRG, in 2004, devoted to the re successful recruitment and retention of Inroads candidates and alumni, previously known as the MetLife Inroads Alumni Network, or MEAN. This BRG has transformed into something called iRISE, and now serves as an upwardly mobile organization focused on leaderships throughout the MetLife enterprise. 
MetLife has been an Inroads collaborative partner for more than 20 years, a relationship the organization truly honors. So now, without further delay, let's take a look at the evolution of iRISE, tonight's best in class award recipient. Please join me in welcoming fellow Inroads alum, Daryl Persons, senior network engineer at MetLife and member of iRISE, who can share this story with us this evening. Daryl? Good evening, everyone. This evening, we will be embarking on a journey. And this is going to uh, basically highlight two organizations working together in a committed partnership. One is MetLife, and the other is En-ROADS. So let's take a look at this partnership and commitment that these two companies share, and what, the, what, what can happen when those two partnerships work in conjunction with each other. Let's talk a little bit about the history. Since 1990, MetLife has been a strategic partner with, en with En-ROADS, and we have served as a, um, uh, one of En-ROADS uh, strategic clients. And En-ROADS played a strategic role and was a key partner in the MetLife entry level strategy that we have at MetLife. Through that partnership, MetLife has received numerous awards on many different levels, whether it's corporate or on an individual level towards that commitment. So let's look a little bit more at the commitment that MetLife has uh, with, with, uh, with En-ROADS. I would like to just highlight one of our executive sponsors who was a great, in, in, uh, who was a great leader and also a great influence for me and for En-ROADS, for MetLife, and for all those being interested in advancing their careers at, at MetLife. And since 2007, Maria Morris has served on the board of directors for En-ROADS. And just to elaborate on that, on that commitment a little bit further, in 2010, she was named the first woman to, be, to chair the En-ROADS, uh, to chair the national board of directors at En-ROADS. And that was also due to her commitment and, excuse me, that was also due to her commitment to the program. But that commitment does not stop there. What I would like to do now is talk a little bit about where that influence has taken other people that has been committed to following, it, following in her footsteps. So in 2004, the vision of creating a legacy was in view when the current MetLife En-ROADS advisor and alumni decided to form the MetLife En-ROADS alumni network. And this served as a liaison between the overall Le uh, MetLife partnership and also served as another layer of support and mentorship towards committing and, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me one second, a little nervous, <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> but uh, me and served as a liaison to the En-ROADS partnership with MetLife and also as an extra support layer and mentorship committed to providing an excellent experience at MetLife to those interns coming through. So looking at this partnership and this commitment, I would like to introduce you to the evolution of iRISE. Excuse me. And what is iRISE? iRISE is iRISE is the, alum, the En-ROADS Alumni and Rising Leaders Network, which is our DBR, our, our diversity business resource, that's committed to helping our alumni help. 
helping our alumni develop their leadership capabilities, and it's also for those focused on their professional development. IRISE, IRISE is open to all associates, uh, it, and it spans across multiple levels of, of business, and it's also available to those, whether they're in an entry-level position all the way to officer-level position. This community effectively provides professional development, networking, and, op and leadership opportunities to diverse professionals that are establishing their career at MetLife. It is also a platform that provides exposure to innovative contributions demonstrated by its members throughout the enterprise. So let's go to the grassroots journey of IRISE. In 2004, MEAN was formed during a brainstorming uh, session held at our New York office. Through 2004-2006, research was conducted by this group to adopt an organizational model. We developed the vision, the mission, and defined our, our strategic partners where we can help fund some of our activities. In order to grow and develop successfully, we were encouraged to engage our executive sponsors and get that buy-in. With that in mind, we were able to reach out to our executives who gladly accepted the responsibility of helping us de design our strategic plan. And that was Don Donna Lee DeMeo and Maria Morris. Now during that strategic plan, they helped us with our objecti objectives, which were to grow, partner, and excel. During the 2007-2008 period, we started creating our structure, and that was done through strategic planning sessions, facilitating workshops, as well as organizational development planning so we can fine tune our organizational growth. In 2009, we really started to grow. We identified our membership, and we were able to establish readership regional leadership so that we can promote, document, and also increase the level of activity in these different areas where all of our members were spread through. And during 2010-2012 is where we really started to engage partnerships, and that was involved around community engagement, spreading awareness, and partnering with organizations such as Junior Achievement where in this particular picture, we help raise funds to further their financial literacy campaign. Some of our biggest achievements, which I hold dear, is being recognized as the model organization by En-ROADS. And another one of those uh, achievements is actually being invited here tonight to sit here in front of you and explain our, or, or share our growing as an organization and how it has been productive for us and for MetLife. 2013 today, we're starting to branch out. And with that being said, we are now looking at, um, we are now, uh, we found it necessary, excuse me, we found it necessary to combine MEAN, which was the original group, with the Rising Leaders Network, which forms IRISE. IRISE is all inclusive and it expands again, uh, among all diversity groups as well as all employee groups that are striving towards talent attraction, retention, and development. I would like right now to just have all of our IRISE members just stand in the audience because I want to just recognize all of our success stories. Everyone is a success, success story that has gone through the En-ROADS program and also um, has been part of MEAN and now IRISE. But for tonight, we're going to highlight just a few that have really made a tremendous impact in their roles and responsibilities at, at MetLife. And one is Michael Chu, who's actually in attendance tonight, who started off as an intern, has navigated his career path, 
and now serves as a, as a director in international finance. Another success story that we have. <laughs> another success story that we have is Rosemary Castillo, who actually was one of the beginning eight when Enrose uh, first began its partnership with MetLife. And now she serves as a director in the Latin American markets uh, doing direct sales. And we have two other individuals who have a, a unique story in that they did not start as uh, interns with the sponsoring company of MetLife, but they went through the Enrose program just like the rest of us, navigated their careers, and now serve in MetLife in their respective roles as vice presidents uh, of corporate benefit funding, Ms. Joy Carruthers, and also, <laughs> and also Charles Williams, uh, who's vice president and actuary in our EMEA product development. And that's one of our regional sections that covers uh, Europe, Africa, and also um, uh, I'm getting help from the crowd. I love this. <laughs> Everyone knows this, right? <laughs> but Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, right? And these are our success stories that, that are part of that, group, that grassroots journey of iRise. So I have a question. How does iRise add value to MetLife? We committed to leveraging our existing talent pipeline through En-ROADS and the Rising Leaders Network. We created a leadership development model geared towards our company's strategic objectives. We engaged our senior leadership and other, par and other partnerships for support and guidance that was very crucial to our growth and development. And most importantly, we had fun executing the plan. And all of that is where we got our return on investments, which increased our retention rate as well as the talent and leadership development uh, for all of those in, in, in the iRISE network and all of those that came through the MEAN uh, pipeline. Thank you very much. And that was our journey through uh, iRISE and how it all came about. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Quinita Fagan, and I look around the room, and I'm so excited. I don't feel like a guest. I feel like I'm amongst family, especially smiling at, with Ivo and Miriam and Forrest and Valerie. So anyway, I just flew from Texas, and I'm so happy to be here as the president of the Inroads Alumni Association. Good evening. My name is Travis Swoop. I'm also an Inroads alum from Northeast Ohio. Uh, I have to commend you all because uh, People talk about your most fears or speaking in public. I don't have a problem speaking in public, but certainly reading is a, <laughs> certainly a problem that I have. So I'm going to do my best here um, to make sure I can articulate this message appropriately. But Quinita and I are here to present the award for the, uh, best, the Best in Class Award to an organization which demonstrates a track record of supporting En-ROADS alumni successes as well as the mission and vision of En-ROADS. IRISE, as you just formally heard, is uh, formerly known as uh, MEAN, has supported En-ROADS alumni retention, which we're super excited about, uh, and candidate recruitment at MetLife uh, Insurance since its inception since 2004. Uh, today, this model has evolved to support leadership development throughout the MetLife organization, and as y'all can hear, they have a track record that proves that the En-ROADS model works. That's my plug. The Enrolls model works because I still get paid every two weeks. Uh, so <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, con congratulations to iRISE, uh, Enrolls 2013 Best in Class Award recipient. Uh, accepting the award on the behalf of iRISE is Gina Silvestre and Dale Percy. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wow, thank you all so much. This is an honor for us. Uh, just as they were saying, the Inrose Foundation 
uh, definitely laid a foundation for iRise. They planted the seed, and we were so fortunate to be part of a company such as MetLife that nurtured that seed. And now we have expanded from the MetLife Inroads Alumni Network that sort of just encompassed the alumni to now actually growing to sharing that same knowledge that Inroads put in us with all of the young people within our organization. We are so proud and so honored and humbled to accept this award. Thank you very, very much. Please welcome United Technologies Corporation Director of Workforce Diversity, Dantea Williams. Good evening, everyone. Forrest T. Harper, CEO and President of En-ROADS, has an extensive background in pharmaceuticals and a fervor for En-ROADS. He is energetic, decisive, and a passionate competitor. You will hear from Forrest later, but first, please welcome Mr. Harper to the podium to assist in presenting our Legacy Award. Thank you, Dante. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm going to go off script a little bit, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have to just take this opportunity to personally thank Curtis and William, who support diversity and inclusion initiatives at UTC all of the time. I know I reach out to them on a regular basis and they are always ready and available to support whatever we're trying to do. So I just really want to thank you for all your mentoring, your speaking at special events, and giving me advice on how to improve diversity at UTC. So I just want to thank you for that. So now I'll share a little bit about our first recipient. He has spent more than 18 years with UTC, beginning his career with Otis Elevator in 1992 as an En-ROADS intern. He considers this one of his greatest accomplishments. Hard work and focus drives everything you do is a sentiment that describes how he rose to the top as a senior legal specialist, which he holds today. He is a graduate of the University of Hartford with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. He is a graduate of Rensselaer with a master's degree in computer science, and he is currently closing in on his law degree from Quinnipiac College School of Law. His was an unusual path, but a successful journey. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the first of two En-ROADS 2013 Legacy Award winners, Curtis St. Bryce. I prepared my message because uh, my wife tells me I talk too much and I can talk for a very long time. And Valerie only gave me five minutes. So, but I wanted to thank you so much uh, today for this award. And particularly uh, with regards to uh, the Reverend uh, Frank C. Carr and the great Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. I first want to thank uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for enabling a particular disposition in me, recognized by you this evening, as worthy for this noble prize. I would also like to thank my wife, Tanisha Monique St. Bryce, for her being such a champion, for her unconditional love and commitment to me and my three daughters, our three daughters together. Uh, particularly over this past four years as I had pursued my Juris Doctorate degree. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is truly a momentous occasion for me in capturing the sentiment, the fervor, and jubilation that pervaded this 21 years of relationship between En-ROADS and United Technologies. You see, I grew up in very humble beginnings. My father died, a great man, when I was nine years old. My mother was left to care for eight siblings, 
all by herself on a hotel maid's salary. But when I was accepted into the Inroads organization in 1992, sponsoring company, Otis Elevator Company, that was an enormous accomplishment, not just for me, but for my entire family. But I will never forget the summer of 1993. During my prior year, I neglected my inroads obligation. And as a result, I was precluded from continuing my internship. After much pleading, I was afforded an opportunity to be reinstated under one condition, that I deliver a letter of apology to my inroads advisor to his home by 9 p.m. that evening. <laughs> By 8.45 p.m., I was at his front door with my two-page le two letter of apology right, that he actually never read. <laughs> but we had a very long conversation. He talked, and I listened. You see, I'm convinced that it was never about the letter in the first place. It was about the principles of what inroads stand for. It was about the wisdom and experience of an advisor that looked past the facade of a young intern and see the genuine potential of success in wanting to cultivate it. Cultivate it to a call that is deeper, deeper commitment to professionalism and community while keeping the doors open for opportunity for others, other talented, un, un, underserved youth. I will always be I, I will forever be grateful to my inroads advisor 